in order for the context history that the API endpoint needs to have in order to understand, it needs to be in something like this. This sort of thing is really the hard part when you're creating a system like this. Creating this sort of summary of what's going on, creating that in a clear way. Because sometimes inside the prompts and everything, you've got these sort of lines and you got line breaks and maybe you put like a sub table inside there and there's a whole bunch of stuff that could confuse the system thinking oh we're no longer in the thing that we're doing we're doing something else greetings salutations and all good things in between what's up everyone matt here welcome to the first video in my series on how to create a continued conversation system using OpenAI and appsheet in this first part i'm going to go over how to create the foundation using Google Drive, Google Sheets, and AppSheet to create a system that will allow us to store all of the data that we're trying, that we'll need for this continued conversation we're trying to have. I'm gonna go step by step. By the end of this, you'll have an app that will allow you to manage all of this, and then we can move on to part two, integrating the script. All right, enough of that. Let's get to it. So here I am in my empty Google Drive folder. What do we need to do? So first thing I'm gonna do is create a new Google Sheet. I'm talking, I'm starting from absolute, absolute bottom. All right, so now that I got my spreadsheet, what do we need to do? Okay, so the, there's a lot that you can do to expand this, but I'm gonna keep things very simple in the beginning here, I'm just gonna show how to create the absolute core structure that you need to do in order to make all of this continued stuff work. Really simple, what do I need? I need two sheets. I need one for the threads. I need another one for the messages. Okay, so in the threads, what do I need? Start date, sure, that way we can order these things. Um, I'm gonna give it a label, I'll fill that in later. Um, and then an ID because everything needs an ID in order to work, right? And you may be asking yourself, why even create a thread label like the a thread uh, layer inside this database? Why not just stick with messages? I'll answer that in the future in, in, in a couple of minutes. So this is the thread table. Let's make messages now. All right. So on messages, we need the, hold on, so messages, we need the thread link obviously to connect this to the thread that it belongs to. I need the message prompt. I need the message response. And I need, this is the, the, the fun one. I, maybe I'll just use reformatting for that. Yeah. Um, all right, so we've got the ID. I've got the, I've got a, a link to the thread that it belongs to. I've got a place for me to type in what I want to say, a place for the AI to respond. I've got this, which I'll explain in the future. Maybe, okay, I want to add in a messages number, okay, so that I can find out, like, is this thread, is this message number one, two, three, four, five? That would be helpful to know. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right, so. Let's go back to threads. Let's start from here. So I'm gonna give this a nice name of chat GPT in app sheet. Okay. And then I'm gonna to go to extensions, app sheet, make an app. Man, I really like how they made this so easy. <laughs> and I can tell you there's a lot of good stuff coming down the line in the coming months from app sheet. It's gonna make this even easier. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, so here we are with our app chat GPT. So we go to our threads and let's make sure all of these things are the way they need to be. So the date is the date, the label is the text. I'm going to mark that as the label. The ID, if we go over here, yep, it got this as the ID. Cool. And I'm going to hide the ID. I don't need to see it. Cool. All right. So actually did most of the work for us on that one. Happy days. Let's go to our tables, add messages. Boom. A lot of fun stuff to be had with what we can do with this. Oh man, this is like the fourth time I've made this app. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. 
Okay, in the messages table, so yeah, you can see things are a little wonky. So we need to set the uh, the messages ID as the ID as the key. So we'll turn that off. Um, I'm going to come over here. We need to make this as required. I don't want to show it, and it needs an initial value of unique ID. Okay, so that's that. Number is the number, reformatting as a text. Okay, this needs to be long text. This needs to be long text. And this needs to be long text. They're all long text. And the thread link needs to be a reference to, guessed it, the threads. And we'll turn on as a part of, why not? Um, so this thread, I'm going to make the label the prompt. And I'm going to hide the reference because I don't want to see that. I'm also going to do some other fancy things for the response. I'm going to put a show if that it doesn't show it in the form. If um, let's see, and we're so hold up, hold up. If we're in the form and is blank, this. So if we're in the form and this is not blank, that's what I want. And I think I'm going to make this an if. So if we're in the form, show this in the form. If it's not blank, otherwise. Uh, yeah, all right. Now I'm just, just is not blank, period. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I want. If this is not blank. Yeah, that's what I want. I don't know what I was thinking. And then the reformatted text, we can hide that all together. The number, we can hide that all together. Okay, the number needs to get a count of the related threads through here. So we need to save so we can get this related messages on the thread side. All right, so now that we have this, we can copy that. We can come back here and come to our number. We can go to the initial value and we can say this needs to be the count of the threads related messages plus one because it'll start at zero. All right. So that'll get us the number. All right. Now to the reformat. In order to get this sort of ongoing context type thing going on, what's really happening is we, we need to feed to the, the AI system everything that's come before, literally. So like question one, answer one. Question two, answer two. Question three, answer three. Like we literally need to put it in that format so that the system can easily see, oh, here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. Okay, so in order to do that, right, some text formatting things to make it clear what's going on. I've fiddled with this a little bit. These are the best advices that I can provide for making this work. Okay, so we all, I'm on the messages table. We go to the messages reformatting. We go to its um, formula, the app formula space. Okay, in here, what I need to do is I need to do a concatenate. And what I'm trying to create is I want to create something that looks like the following. So it's like um, Q1, blah, 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 blah. A1, blah, 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 right? And then I want like a line. And then it'll be like Q2, blah, 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 A2, blah, 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 blah. And then in order for the context history that the API endpoint needs to have in order to understand, it needs to be in something like this because this will be clear to the system. Oh, there's an ongoing conversation happening here. There's number one, here's interaction number two, here's interaction number three, so on and so forth. This sort of thing is really the hard part when you're creating a system like this. Creating this sort of summary of what's going on, creating that in a clear way. Because sometimes inside the prompts and everything, you've got these sort of lines and you got line breaks and maybe you put like a sub table inside there and there's a whole bunch of stuff that could confuse the system thinking, oh, we're no longer in the thing that we're doing, we're doing something else. So you've got to force it to see things in this way. Okay, so 
this is the result that we're trying to get to. All right. Now, this reformatting column that I'm dealing with here, this builds not all of this. It just builds this first top part like this. All right. So this is the part where I need to create the Q1 with the question, the A1 with the, with the answer. That's what I need to create inside this messages reformatting because that's going to get this little chunk of the chat history all in one little thing. And then over in the thread, I can say, cool, go get all of those and let's list them all. All right. So now that I've explained what it is we're shooting for, okay, this is the the overall thing that we're trying to create. So I'm going to leave that here at the top of the screen so that we can use that as a nice reference, right? Okay, so Q1 with all these little line break things, right? So go into a quote, do a vertical bar, do the Q. Okay, that's the first part. And then I need to put the number. So that's why I created this messages number column so I can easily get that, okay? So do it like that, do it like that, go back into a quote, do the line break, do the vertical line, and then drop to a new line. Okay, and then here is where I wanna put the prompt, All right? Okay, and then back into text, do a line break. Okay, we'll do the same sort of thing with the A. Okay, we'll put the number back in here again, All right? Okay, drop down, and then we put the prompt. Or not the prompt, but the response here, All right? And then that, that is our formula. So if we look here, right, we got Q1 line break, and then whatever the prompt is, we have A1, right? And the response. All right, so that's what we need to create. So get rid of all of that, leave this as it is. Make sure it validates, good to go. All right, save this. So that's there. Okay, now that gets us to the point to where we have for each message that we send and we get a response, right? This message reformatting column takes all of that and makes that single entry for whatever this message is. Now, in order to get the, the, the ongoing history to happen, right? This is why we built the parent level of the thread. Because now that we have this nicely formatted how we need it, we can go to the thread side. We can say, cool, grab all of those and make a list of them all. Let's do that right now. So on the threads, what I wanna do is I need to create a new virtual column. And I'm gonna call this thread history. What is it that I need to do? All right, well, I need to concatenate. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to substitute, bear with me here, the related messages, and then I need that column that I just made, or no, not the, that I made, but this reformatting. I need that here, All right? Okay, so, that's the first part. Let me finish this one off. So separator is the space comma space. And I want to replace the space comma space with a line break, some of that, and another line break. Close the substitute, close the concatenate. All right. So what am I doing here? So this, this formula right here, the first part, this little thing here, that says, okay, hey, we, we've got all of these records that are related to, we have all of these messages that are related to this thread. Inside those messages, there's a column, messages reformatting. Give me a list of all of those values, all right? So, and they're gonna be in order, one, two, three, four, five, right? Okay, so then that creates the list, but it's in, it's, it's a list. It has space comma space separating each part. So that's where the substitute comes in, where I say, cool, substitute out of that list, the space comma space. So take that and replace it with 
this little line break with a with a vertical like a little line and another line break so line break horizontal line line break that's what it's going to replace all of the separators that are in the middle so i'm going to have this message qa thing and then it's going to drop down put a line drop down again and then i'm going to have the next qa thing and then it's going to drop down it's going to put a line drop down and i'll have the next qa thing this is going to create that sort of ongoing context that we can then feed to the system. So we save this. This needs to be a long text. If we save all of this, that is all of the kind of meat and potatoes things that we need to do in order to get everything set up. Great job, everyone. That's the end of part one. You've now completed the foundation for everything using AppSheet. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to generate the script that we need to leverage OpenAI and get a response. And then all of the things that you need to do in order to integrate that script into a bot in your AppSheet app. Uh, if you want a copy of the app that I just made in this video, there's a link down in the description. Go down there and copy it. The only thing that you need in order to use that is a, an API key from OpenAI. You can just drop that into the welcome page. There's a field right there. It's very clear where you got to put it. Drop that in there and you're good to go. You're ready to use the app. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a supporter. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you have ideas for how this app should be progressed into the future, please let me know because this is the beginning of a new evolution series. So I'm going to take this app and progress it further. So let me know where you want it to go. All right, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being supporters and everything. Really do appreciate it. All right, everybody. See you in the community.